friends. Welcome back to the morning devotions of the Doncaster Methodist Circuit. My name is Reverend John Belfield and this is for the Tuesday uh, the 18th of January. Yesterday, and uh, if you look back on the previous recordings, but yesterday you were looking at perceiving or seeing or um, feeling what God is doing and, and what God is doing new within your life, your community and your church. Today we're having a look about what is he going to do with us? What changes do we need to make within our own lives to be holy and complete as disciples of Jesus Christ? But before we do that, shall we pray? Father, we want to thank you for this new day. We want to thank you for the day of blessing. We want to thank you for those around us. We want to thank you for family, friends and community. We want to thank you that you are the ever-present God. And we want to thank you, Lord, that there is nothing that we can't bring before you and before the throne of grace. Bless us, we pray. Give us understanding of this word for you so that we might live full lives for you in this time. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, what, where I'm taking the reading from is from Ephesians and uh, Paul is speaking to this church in Ephesus. It's a lovely little church and uh, he has um, been uh, spent a time of building them up, admonishing them, building them up again, which is the way of discipling. And uh, um, he, what he wants to talk about now is this new life that we have in Jesus Christ. And he says to the, he writes to the uh, church in Ephesus, uh, after they had uh, lost some of their way. He says, that is not the way you learn Christ, Ephesians 4.20. For you surely have heard about him and you were taught in him, as truth is in Jesus. You were taught to put away your former way of life, your old self, corrupt and deluded by its lusts, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to clothe yourselves with new self, created according to the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness, so that then putting away falsehood, let us speak the truth to our neighbours, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing, rather than let them labour, rather let them labour and work honestly with their own hands, so as to something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouth, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and, sl and slander together with all malice and be kind to one another tender hearted forgiving one another as God in Christ Jesus has um, forgiven you one thing's for certain in, in life is that um, some things come back to bite us if we don't deal with it um, I'm looking at my patio this morning and uh, I recognise that I didn't clean it as I should have done at the end of, uh, uh, well, at the end of summer in, and in autumn. I gave it a little brief whirl and uh, um, kind of half-hearted attempt and I'm looking at it and seeing all the little bits of green um, that have um, grown up and I'm thinking to myself, that's going to be an awful big job uh, cleaning it up. And I'm not looking forward to it. Um, I'm going to procrastinate and delay it and everything else like that. But it needs to be done. And it's the same in our lives, in our life in Christ. If there are things in our life um, that we allow to creep back in, um, former things, then it's harder and harder to deal with. And when uh, Paul is talking to this church in Ephesus, it, first of all, he wants to remind us whom we are. We're disciples of Jesus Christ. You know, that's our new self. Uh, that's our new way of being. 
that is whom we are. And even though we may have been in Christ for 40, 50, 60 years, or even five or ten, five or years, or whatever it may be, which is this is our, our place, it's whom we are. We're Christians, we're followers, we're part of a community of believers together. And the foremost uh, calling on a community is seen right in those um, in the end verses. Be kind to one another. It's a simple thing, isn't it? You know, if you're part of a grouping, if you're nasty, and if you're um, if you're speaking uh, falsehood or malice, or you're getting angry, or you're resenting someone, that community is scarred and hurt, and uh, uh, and sometimes damage is done. And he's a tender-hearted, forgiving. And uh, we thought perhaps uh, the other day, who is it that we might be needing to forgive? Because Christ has forgiven you. That's the start of the Christian walk. Christ has forgiven us. He's given us new life. But what Paul emphasises is that there are things in our lives that we need to put away. Um, and he doesn't mean like put it in a cupboard so that you can take it out later. He means put it away, dispose of it, so it no longer affects us. And he talks quite powerfully about it. Put away falsehood. If you've been tempted to lie or bend the truth or um, not be totally honest with your words, put it away. Don't do it. Make our priority speaking truth um, to one another, speaking truth. And he says, um, OK, it is OK. People get angry. We all get angry. We all become disillusioned at some times. Um, but there's there's ways to deal with our anger. And part of, uh, sometimes uh, dealing with our anger um, with a particular situation is where the prophets were. You know, they shouted out, you mustn't be like that. You mustn't be like that. But what Paul is saying is sometimes our anger leads us into sinful behaviour, looking for revenge or wanting to say, I'm right. And... Uh, um, he says, look, OK, you may get angry, but let's use it for good, not for bad. Do not sin. And he gives some simple instructions. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. In partnerships and, uh, and, and marriages, um, and when I used to do marriage preparation courses, it was one of the big things that we, we, we emphasised. You may get be angry at one another, you may be cross at one another, and sometimes deservedly so. But if it festers over the night, it'll be so much more difficult to deal with in the morning. And Paul's saying it here, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Make sure it's dealt with. Um, when uh, NA or AA, Narc Narcotics Anonymous or Alcoholics Anonymous, they're called to make, you're called to make a moral inventory of your life. And if you've, called, uh, if you've caused sin, hurt or upset, put it right there and then. And friends, I ask you today, what do you need to put away? You don't need me to tell you. The Lord, you are brothers and sisters. And just as in my life, the Lord will bash away at the door. He bashes away at your door. What do you need to put away? Who do you need to make amends with? And is your anger hanging overnight and further? Friends, there's a place, and it's called the Cross of Calvary, where our Lord calls us to again and again and again, and urges us to lay down our burden before him, that we might should live lives free and to the fullest. And it may be that some of us have been called to that cross again to lay down burdens. Let us think about it and reflect upon it in the name of Christ.